There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. No double parking. Move it, son. <laughs> yes, yes, I heard you. I said move it. Oh, but you see, I'm not double parked, not at all. Then what are you doing? That's a yellow zone, ain't it? So it is. But I won't be a moment. I just have to use the payphone. That, that one right there on the corner. All right, officer? Loading and unloading only. One call. That's it. I've been driving up and down for blocks. Ten blocks, to be exact, in search of a phone. And There's phone booths all over the place. Yeah, and they're all out of order. Hard to believe. I know. In a city like this? Ain't my problem. No, but it's mine. I have a call to make a very important call. Why don't you go home? You got a phone, don't you? Of course I do, but it can't wait. Layla might go out for the evening, and, and I gotta catch her first and tell her, I mean, ask her if it would be all right to, well, to... I'll give you ten minutes. That's it. Or you get towed. You don't want that to happen, do you? Oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Eighty-seven bucks plus the ticket. Take my advice. Find a parking space. I tried that, but there aren't any. Two minutes. You'll see. I'll be right back. Go on around. Keep it moving. Oh, there. Come on, come on. I'm sorry, but all circuits are temporarily busy. Please try again later. I'm sorry, but all circuits are temporary. What is going on? Layla. Oh, baby, I'm trying to get through. Don't you know that? Can't you tell, darling? It's Roger. Roger. I need you tonight. Oh, Layla. Mr. Roger Shackleforth, age, youthful 20s. Occupation, being in love, full time. Not just in love, but madly, passionately, illogically, miserably, all consumingly obsessed with a young woman who has a vague recollection of his face, and even less than a passing interest. In a moment, however, you'll see a switch in attitude, because Mr. Roger Shackleforth, the young gentleman in question, will take a short but very meaningful journey into a calling area known as the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Chaser, starring Stephen Tobolowski with Stacy Keach as your narrator. More coffee, Jenny. No thanks, Margie. Well, maybe just a smidge or it'll keep me up. Miss, can I use your... All the way in the back. No, not that. The telephone. Do you have a public telephone? Sure do. On the wall. Good. I'll need some change. Here. Better get in line, though. What? The young man's been at it for... I don't know how long. Man, oh man, are my dogs killing me. Tell me about it. Back of the line, pal. This is madness. <laughs> yeah, they call it New York. It's becoming impossible to make a call anywhere in the city. You can say that again. Thank you. This is an outrage. Watch your blood pressure, honey. Look, it's making another call. Same number over and over. I tell you, he won't give up. Doesn't even talk, just dials. Maybe he's got a dialect. <laughs> 
Gonna have to soak his finger in Epsom salts. Oh, I simply can't stand this. I must use the phone. Well, la-dee-da. Who are you, Mr. High and Mighty? I have a business appointment, and I'm late. Stand aside. Oh, no. We're all in this together. Uh, look, I'll buy your place in line. One dollar to get in front of you. A dollar? Are you kidding? All right, five. Well, since you put it that way. How about you? Got another fiver on you? Certainly, certainly. Who's next? Don't look at me. But I am looking at you. Have you ever made five dollars so easily? That ain't the point. I should first pay the same as place and show. How much do you want? Nothing less than a sorba. Ten! Th that's, that's... Then take your business elsewhere. I don't come cheap. I can see that. Here we are. After you, sweetie. Time, young man. I've had quite enough. Hello, Layla, darling. Who's this? It's Roger. Oh, hello, Roger. What is it? I was just wondering. Uh-huh. Uh, I happen to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> may I, I mean, may I come to see you? No, no, I can't. But darling. It's out of the question. Why? I couldn't bear to see anybody tonight. I'm such a mess. Oh, Layla, you can never be a mess. Listen, darling, I have to see you. Roger, it's impossible. But I must see you. Furiously, fiercely must. I love you. I can't hear you. We must have had a bad connection. I'll have to hang up. But Layla... Roger, you've got to stop this. You're acting like a baby. I can't see you now, and that's that. Well, then talk to me. What do we have to talk about? I don't know. Say something. Say anything. Just let me keep hearing the sound of your voice. All right, Roger. I'll say something. Why don't you take a fly and jump at the moon? Layla! Layla! Now then, you've finished, have you? No. She hung up on me. It's a misunderstanding. Or she swore. I better call back and make sure everything's okay. No, no, please. I have an emergency. So have I. It won't do any good to call. Take my word for it. How do you know? I understand. I heard it all. You can't do it over the telephone. Will you stop pushing me? If he won't, I will. Yeah. Me too. Time. But... Here, take this card. It'll solve your problem. What are you... Take it. Go and see this man right now. Believe me, there's no other way I know. Go and see this man at this address, and he'll help you, guaranteed. But I don't even know where that is. Uh, not far. Just a few blocks. Give it a try. You'll see it works. All your problems will be solved before the night is over. Hurry now. Thank you. Thank you. Operator, I got an emergency. Have a nice night now here. See you just... Hey, hey, where's my car? <sighs> Number 1820, 22, this must be it. Mm-hmm, pretty dark. Can't see a doorbell. Ugh, some door. Didn't even touch it. <clears throat> all right, all right, I see you there. Stop skulking around. I wasn't skulking. I just didn't know if... Common disease, not knowing if. Well, don't just stand there. Sit down. Okay, where? Try that pile of books. Oh, you sure do have a lot of them. I never saw so many before. I is this a library? Well, you might say that. A private one. Have you read all these? Some of them. The others are for reference. You never know what people will need. No, sir. Do I know you? A man gave me your card. It says, Professor A. D. A. E. M. O. N. How do you pronounce that? Damon? If you prefer. 
And this address, I guess I'm in the right place? Oh, then you haven't come for a bottle of the glove cleaner. Glove cleaner? No, no. As a matter of fact... Perhaps another time. Well, as a matter of fact... You keep saying that. Come to the point. Well, the point is, I don't know why I came at all. You see, the man who gave me your card was a complete stranger. Oh, yes. Satisfied former customer, most likely. But I don't know why he gave it to me. I was standing there in the restaurant, trying to make a call when... I know why you're here. You want what I've got. But how could I? I don't even know what you've got. Hmm, a little bit of everything. Name your poison. Ointments, salves, powders, sovereign remedies, nectars, lotus blossoms, toxins, tonics, antitoxins, decoctions, concoctions, and potions. All guaranteed. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't need anything like that. Well, don't be hasty. You're here, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't need any medicine. Son, you just might. You look feverish. Oh, that. It's sort of, you know, nothing really. Nothing I don't supply. Something is my specialty. And anything is what you'll get here. You're ambitious. Is that it? You want success? Money like Midas, the world at your feet? No, it's not that at all. Power. You want power. You don't understand. All I want is Layla. Layla? Yes. Oh, if I had Layla, I could do all the rest myself. Layla? I might have known. I offer him practically anything, and all he wants is Layla. I guess there's nothing you can do about that. That is the simplest of all, the elementary parlor trick of my science. You disappoint me. No, you still don't understand. You see, I am in love with someone named Layla, but she's not in love with me, and... I don't know why I'm telling you this. I do. I can arrange it so she'll love you. How? I promise you, she'll never leave your side. When she isn't telling you she loves you, she'll be gazing at your loving face. She won't even eat before you do. And nothing will be too much for you to ask of her. Really? She'll worship you. She'll beg for kisses and weep for joy at your touch. And if in passing time you should perhaps look at another girl, or even do a little more than look, she'll feel hurt, but she'll forgive you and love you just the same. Frankly, you'd get the same shake from a cocker spaniel. Oh, but that's wonderful. That's, that's all in the world I want, my Layla's love. Is Layla's love. I should have known. Now, where did I put that bottle? If it isn't his Layla's love, it's his Dorothy's love, or his Rhea's love, or his Gwen's love. You keep it up there, on the bookshelves? Away from prying eyes. Tell me one last time. Are you sure you wouldn't be interested in the glove cleaner, as I call it? What is it? Well, there are many names for it, including the Eradicator. But glove cleaner is a nice, nondescriptive title. Clean, colorless, tasteless, unidentifiable, and... Sure. I'm not very interested in glove cleaners. Why not? It's easy, it's swift, it leaves no trace. It's perfect for its purpose. You're not making sense. Why, boy, that's all I make. Which is why I'm such a lonely man. You're absolutely sure you don't want to try the glove cleaner. It is very expensive. Perhaps you can't afford it. For instance, this little bottle costs a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? Are all your prices like that? Mm, some are, some aren't. What about the other one? The one that will make Layla love me? Oh, that. That's only a dollar. A dollar? Love potions are my cheapest items, and they're overpriced at that. A dollar for my Layla's love? It won't hurt her. If anybody gets hurt, it'll be you. But I don't expect you to believe me. How do I use it? Put it in anything. A drink, tea, soup, coffee, water, anything at all. Makes no difference. You'll get exactly what you claim to want. Professor, you got a deal. I really don't believe any of this, but I'll try it. I'll try anything. What do I have to lose? If it works, oh, if it works, I'll be the, the happiest man in the world. So it would appear. 
Lucky to find a flower shop open this late. May I help you? I certainly hope so. And the occasion? What? What is the event, sir? A prom, perhaps, or something along more somber lines? Somber? An injury, a lingering illness, leading to a departure. Dare I say, an interment? Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that. <sighs> Alas. A celebration! Ah. And what, may I ask, are we celebrating this evening? You may ask, and I'll tell you. We are celebrating fulfillment, contentment, consummation. Ah, the reading of a will. No, 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 no. It's much more than that. A life sentence in the arms of my love without the possibility of parole. My condolences. We have some lovely wreaths. Don't you understand? I'm talking about true love. The kind that you want to shout from the rooftop. Sparks, fireworks. A boutonniere. No, something more. A wrist corsage, then. Or a tasteful nosegay. What is the biggest thing you have? In what respect? I know. A rose, by any other name. Color, color. How about blue? Yellow. Green? Pink. Red? White. Soul? For purity. An excellent choice. I'm sure one dozen long-stemmed white roses. Will there be anything else? No. Yes. Champagne. And two glasses. Long stems on those, too. Mm. I'm afraid you'll have to visit your local vintner for those accessories. My sympathies to the blushing bride. Who could that be? Yes? Layla, it's me. Roger, I told you I was busy tonight. Busy? How busy can you be in a dressing gown? I'm just about to put on my dress. Call me. When? Tomorrow. Just a minute, just a little minute. Flowers, see? And champagne. That's very nice, Roger. Thank you. Now, if you'll just run along. I couldn't have lasted the evening without seeing you, Layla. I'm sure that's not true. You don't know what it's like to love somebody, to love anybody so much, so desperately. No, I suppose I don't. It's good champagne. Just enough for the two of us. <laughs> now that's not asking much, is it? All you have to do is give me five minutes for one drink. Roger, you are acting like a clod. A silly, stupid, sophomoric clod. I love you. Stop saying that. But you don't know what I went through to get here. My car was towed. I've been walking for the past hour. How can you be so cruel? All right, one drink, five minutes, and then you go. You won't regret it. Layla? Not so fast. I've got to put on my dress. Why? You look like an angel. I know, but wait here. Ha-ha! <laughs> it's like a new millennium. Don't be too long, darling. Just long enough to prepare one very special glass of champagne for you. Well, let's get this over with. Wait, this one's yours. What's the difference? Uh, there's, th there's a little more in this one. If you say so. To us, darling. Well, time's up. Not so soon. Thank you very much for the drink and the flowers. Be sure to put them in water. W w would you like me to do it for you? Goodbye, Roger. Excellent champagne, wasn't it? It'll pass. Very good year. No aftertaste. I suppose so. What are you looking at me like that for? In case it's my last look. All right, you've had it. The show's over. One last 
little kiss. Don't press your luck. But Layla... Roger, please, let's not prolong this. I haven't the time. All I'm asking is... Please go. Now. Look, I don't love you. I don't want you here. I don't even like you at the moment. Now go, please. <sighs> if you're sure that's what you want. <sighs> you look like a whipped dog. Oh, here. That's the best I can do. And it took all my strength. Thank you, I guess. Oh. What is it? I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm feeling a bit... Peculiar. You are? Roger, wait a minute. Perhaps I am being cruel. I don't mean to be. I understand. Do you? I'm sure I can do better than that. Let me make it a little nicer. If that's what you want. <clears throat> <clears throat> That was definitely an improvement. What's happening? What is happening to me? Who cares? Come here, baby. Oh, Roger. Can I get you anything, darling? <sighs> um, no, no. Are you sure? Quite sure. Is the music too loud? No, no, it's fine. Let me turn it up for you. It's fine, I said. What are you doing? Reading. Oh. Is it a good book? Great. Because if it isn't, I can get you another one. Layla, would you sit down, please? Of course, darling, if you want me to. Here? Oh, I meant somewhere else. All right, my love, if that's your wish. I'm sorry if it bothers you. It's just that I love to kneel at your feet. Well, kneel in a chair. Okay. Which one, darling? Anyone. Doesn't matter. Darling? Yes? Do you want your slippers now? No, thank you. Are you sure? I got them especially for you. They're the best the store had. They make my feet hot. Oh, well, if your feet are hot now, I could... I could soak my hands in ice water and then caress them. That might feel good. Do you think so? No, no, my feet are fine. You have the most beautiful feet, like a dancer. I've never seen a more perfect instep. Would you like to prop them up on something? I'm fine. I know. Do you want to smoke your pipe? I don't think so. Why not? It burns my tongue. I'd be happy to break it in for you. I could smoke it all day while you're at the office, and then when you come home... Thanks, Layla, but no thanks. You're welcome. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. I'll get you a cigarette. Don't worry about it. I should have put fresh cigarettes in the box by your chair. Here, I'll light one for you. Am I doing it right? Fine. Would you like me to rub your back, darling? You just finished rubbing my back. I know. It's just that I adore touching you. And I'd be glad to rub it again. Maybe later. Am I disturbing your reading? No, 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 no. 
Did I disturb you by asking if I was disturbing you? No, dearest, not at all. Oh, Roger, I love you so much. I'm so happy you're you. You're just perfect. I love to say I love you. I love to love you. I gotta get out of here. You do? I have an appointment. You do? Almost forgot. Hand me my jacket. Of course, here. I'm sorry I didn't press it for you. Will you be long? I don't know. You don't? I may be late. Would you like me to go too? No, 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 no. No, won't be that late. Why don't you stay here and hug my pillow or something? Is anything wrong, Roger, darling? No, dearest. It's just I got an appointment and I'm late and I need a little air. While you're gone, my love will grow and grow. And when you get back, do you know what will happen when you get back? I promise you that... Mm -hmm. I promise you that when you get back, I'll make you the happiest man in the world. There you go, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> it's too bad it's not a happy hour. You're running up quite a tap. Happy hour. Haven't had one of those in six months. Um, let me guess. Your old lady? That's just it. She's not old. She's young and beautiful. Perfect face, perfect figure. <laughs> What's to complain about? I don't have any complaints, except that she's too perfect. Huh? Waits on me hand and foot, sees to my every need, ready to drain off my tension at a moment's notice. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. Hey, take my advice. What's that? Sit back and enjoy it. Ain't everybody's got what you got. Guys would kill for that. <sighs> Luck had nothing to do with it. How do you mean? What, you make a deal with the devil or something? Sometimes I wonder. That's it. It. Maybe I did. Maybe I did after all. Where is this guy so I can make a deal myself? Here's a piece of advice for you. If anybody says he's got the solution to your problem, tell him to get lost. Keep the change. Thanks, buddy. See you next time. I doubt it. With any luck, there won't be a next time. Have a nice night now, here. I will, Margie. You take care. Excuse me. Be just a minute, sir. There's room at the counter. Hello? Yes? You remember me, don't you? Uh, can't say that I do. You must. I was here once before. Tying up the phone caused quite a scene, I'm afraid. People lined up out the door. When was this? Six months ago. Exactly. You don't say. Been in here much since then? Not once. I didn't think so. I was desperate to make a call, you see. I kept standing at the payphone, dialing over and over again, and everyone got terribly irritated. It happens sometimes, but I can't say I remember you. Listen, there was a man here that night, middle-aged, carrying an overcoat and a package. He said he was late for a meeting uptown. He bought his way to the front of the line, and when I finally left, he gave me some advice. Handed me his business card, this one right here. What's this now? So he told me to go to the address on the card, said it would solve my problem. I don't know anything about that. That's fine. What I want to know is, do you remember the man? Is he a regular customer? Because if he is, I have to find him and ask him what happened to his problem and what he knows about the address on this card, anything at all. Sorry, mister, I can't help you. People come and go all the time. Could have been anyone. Then at least keep the card. And if you ever see a man trying to give out one like it, grab it, tear it up. You can't imagine how much grief you'll save some poor soul. Here, 
Number 22. Yep, same as before. Now the second set of doors. Here we go. Uh, hi there, Professor. Ah, uh, yes, I've been expecting you. You have? Yes, if not later, then sooner. So you remember me? I never forget a face. I... I rather thought you'd like to hear how things turned out. Oh, I know how things turned out. That potion <laughs> really works. Why am I not surprised? Well, um, how are things with you? Things haven't changed with me in years. Pretty ugly situation we got. What situation is that? In the world, I mean, with China. You don't look so good either. Me? Oh, I'm just as you would expect. <laughs> That's what I thought. I just dropped by to tell you. I'm glad to hear it. Is this what you're looking for? That's the bottle of the glove cleaner? Mm-hmm. You sell much of that stuff? Now and again. What's in it? See for yourself. No color, no odor, nothing that leaves a trace. No way to detect its presence. And it's sure. Guaranteed. It's what you came for, isn't it? Me? No, 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 no. Not at all. How much did you say? One thousand dollars. And it's painless. Of course. It's perfect for its purpose. The only thing of its kind in the world. Interesting. She loves you as I said she would, doesn't she? A constant love, and nothing you can do to her will change it. You took the words right out of my mouth. She worships and adores you and hangs on your every syllable. To put it bluntly, yes. The price is non-negotiable, I'm afraid. Professor, I don't know what else to do. I'm going out of my ever-loving mind. I'm sure you are. I can't stand it anymore. It's only natural. I never imagined there was such a thing as being loved too much. Well, you wouldn't. Isn't there an alternative? Some way we could just quiet it down a little. If there were, I'd be out of business. You must have a potion that will transfer a little of her love to someone else. Like a nice little teacup chihuahua, for instance, a Labrador retriever, St. Bernard. Not a chance. She's all yours. But she's so nice to me. So very good, night and day. The glove cleaner is the only way. I'll put it back. I can't do that. There must be another way. This is the only way. You don't know what it's like all the time. Love, love, love. It's enough to give you diabetes. I do know. How do you think I came to invent the glove cleaner? But a thousand dollars. That's all my savings. It's always that way. No trace. Absolutely undetectable. I take checks and credit cards. <sighs> All right. Made out to... Cash. Uh, one thing I must caution you about. What's that? Use it immediately. Do you hear me? Immediately. It's imperative, and you must use it all. Why? Will it spoil? No, but you will. Once you delay, you're lost. Believe me, if you fail the first time you try to use it, you'll never have the courage to try again. Never. Goodbye, Professor. Farewell. It never changes. First the stimulant, then the chaser. Hello, Layla. <laughs> Come on, take the chain off. Of course I will. Oh, Roger, I'm so glad to see you. I know you are. Why, look what you've brought me. Oh, I thought we ought to have a party. Just the two of us. After all, not every couple stays married for six whole months. 
Roger, what a lovely surprise. You said you might be late, and instead you come back with champagne and flowers. I'll put them in water. Uh, later. I'll get the glasses. Can't have a party without glasses. It's just like the first time. Only tonight you don't have to beg to stay. Why don't you sit over on the couch? I'll open the champagne. Go on. If that's your wish. Do you want candlelight? It would be so romantic. Let's have candles, all right? Sure, sure. Candlelight, schmandlelight. Anything you say. Oh, darling, it's so wonderful being married to you. I've never been so completely happy in my whole life. I live to love you. Only you. That's nice. I mean, that's nice. Really. Do you need any help? No, no, no. I'll serve you. Sweetest, how did you happen to think of champagne? Oh, I asked myself, what does Layla need? And it came to me like a bolt out of the blue. Here you go. To us. To us. I remember the first time you brought me champagne, how you looked. Your eyes were filled with longing, and you watched me so sadly because you thought it was going to be our last drink. Isn't that what you were thinking? <clears throat> right. I remember. Go on, Layla. Drink up. Lover. Hmm? My sweet lover, Marshmallow, sit here. Why not? Go ahead now. Drink up. I'm not very thirsty. Good to the last drop. I'm not sure it's a good idea this time. Why not? Sit closer. Careful. What's this? What's what? Between the cushions. Have you taken up knitting? In this book, Dr. Spock? I've got news for you, my sweet little rabbit. Rabbit? I just got word from the doctor. What are you talking about? The test came back today, and it's positive. Isn't that wonderful? You don't mean you're... Oh, darling, we don't need champagne. We've got each other, all three of us. I suppose I could have just a sip. That won't do any harm. No, I mean... Don't. Maybe just a little toast to celebrate. Not now. Give me your glass. I'll pour it out. Are you sure? I'm sure. I couldn't have done it anyway. I could never have gone through with it. Think of it, darling. This is only the beginning. We're going to be even happier than we are now. And it'll go on like this for the rest of our lives. Yes. The rest of our lives. Mr. Roger Shackleforth, who has discovered at this late date that love can be as sticky as a vat of molasses, as unpalatable as a hunk of spoiled yeast, and as all-consuming as a six-alarm fire in a canvas tent, case history of a would-be lover boy who should never have ventured into the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com.
Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Chaser, starring Stephen Tobolowsky with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Robert Presnell Jr., based on a short story by John Collier. Heard in the cast were Michelle Graff, Roderick Peoples, Joby Cerny, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Carl Amari, Roy Malanzi, Meg Falcon, Jennifer Leterio, Linda Ryder, Peggy Roter, and Craig Harris. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design and custom Foley effects for the Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Michael Slabach, and Matt Sorrow. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>